Every feature film, episodic TV series or big brand commercial uses colour grading to give it the final finish. If we want to create professional looking videos, colour grading adds that final polish. But can we do this with an app? So in this video, I'm going to go through the best colour grading apps that I found for iPhone and iPad that have the tools that allow you to colour grade your videos. Most editing apps have colour tools within them. VN, CapCut, LumaFusion and others. They all have very good basic tools for working on the colour of video clips. As well, we can edit the colour of clips directly in the native iPhone or iPad Photos app. But if we want more than these basic controls, something more like what you get in Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, then currently we need a dedicated app. So hopefully at some point in the not too distant future, LumaFusion will add scopes and color wheels and things like that. But until that glorious day, if we really want some serious controls for color grading, then we're probably going to have to use an app. The first one I'm going to look at is called Video Grade. Video Grade is a one-time payment app. In the UK, it's £4.99, so I guess it's around $5 in the US. The app is nicely laid out on both iPhone and iPad. We have basic controls, exposure, contrast, and vibrance. Then we have white balance controls, temperature, and tint. There's also some white balance presets here. I like the vignette control in this app because you get the fall-off control, which allows you to adjust the smoothness of the effect. Under the recovery heading, the shadows and highs sliders allow us to push up brightness in the shadows and recover detail, or bring down the highlights to recover detail there. This will also reduce contrast in the image. If you want to create the film look, then you might want to use this control to add shadow and highlight roll-off. Under sharpness, there's just the sharpness slider. We can make the image sharper, but we can also slide into negative sharpness which basically adds blur to the whole image. Thing is that smartphone video is often over sharpened, so adding a negative value here will soften the image and make it look more like film as well. Under looks, we have some presets, monochrome and color. So a bunch of black and white options first and then some color ones. So there's not too many to choose from and there doesn't appear to be a way to adjust the intensity of the look. So I'm going to give the video grade looks a thumbs down. Noise allows us to add some noise reduction and sharpness again. So perhaps these sliders could have been grouped together. Do we really need two sharpness sliders? Saturation allows us to adjust this setting for the whole image as well as in the shadows, mids and highs. And being able to reduce saturation in different areas is pretty useful because shadows and highlights generally look better desaturated. So if we push up saturation in the mids and pull down saturation in the shadows and highs, we get a more cinematic looking image. See how we get these nice bluish shadows contrasting with the yellow orange light. As well, on my face, there's a nice orange highlight. So we're getting close to that orange and teal look. And if we want to compare with the original look, we can see them side by side. Using brightness controls, we can again adjust for the whole image, shadows, mids, or tones. So I'm just going to bring down the shadows and mids a little. Now we have channels, which allows us to adjust the RGB balance for each channel. If we pull down the blue level in the red channel and pull down the red level in the blue channel, we can achieve something like that popular teal and orange look. Below we have tint, and again this is for shadows, mids, and highs. Level controls allows us to roll off the shadows and highs, as well as adjust gamma, which is basically mid-tones. The bloom effect seems to add a kind of general haze to the image, but I don't see any real kind of bloom on the lights. But it's quite useful to have this for softening the image. It's a bit like adding a diffusion filter to the camera. We have one basic histogram we can toggle on and off. We can load and save presets as well. And finally, a preview button allows us to watch the clip in motion with the grade applied. In my opinion, overall, this is a very solid app that comes at a very affordable one-off price. Next up is Darkroom. The Darkroom is pretty expensive for an app. There's various subscription deals, or we can opt for the £44.99 buyout option. If you want, you can try the app for free. Just install and open and... When you get this screen, just tap the cross to close it. So now pick a video clip and start editing. 
to export something, you will have to pay or take the three day trial. So there's a row of buttons to select various editing options. So first up is various rotation and cropping options. If you quickly want to change the aspect ratio for social media stuff, you can do that here. You can also adjust angle, rotate 90 degrees at a time and do a mirror flip as well. You can even adjust the skew, but I think that might be more useful for photo editing than video editing. Next button opens up the preset looks, swipe along and select. So once selected, just tap the look again to open up a slider to adjust intensity. Next button opens up our basic grading tools, all in one long list. Having everything in one panel like this makes it very intuitive and quick to use. It's so easy to work on these sliders to correct or enhance the look. There's not as many options here as some of the other apps. For example, there's no glow, there's no film halation, and there's no bloom. We do have grain and vignette, but just one slider for the amount you want. We can't fine tune those effects like grain size, for example, or vignette roll off. That makes this app nice and simple and fast. But if you like to go deep into settings, then this app probably isn't for you. I also really like this color setting panel. The top part tells you how much of each color is already in the image. We can see there's a lot of red and orange here with some blues as well. If we decide this is too much red and orange, we can bring down the saturation of that color. The red and orange is mostly around my face. And in this image, we might feel my face is too much in the shadow. So if I select that color and push up the luminance, I can add some brightness to my face. Normally, if we want to brighten one area of the image, we'd have to use a mask. So this is a really neat little tool. To save your settings as a new filter, so you can apply it to other clips, Use create new filter, just give it a name and save. So there's even a history panel so that you can go back step by step through your grade if you made any kind of mistakes or you want to undo things. So that's really useful. So the next app is called Video LUT. Whereas Darkroom is stripped down to pretty much the basic color grading tools, the Video LUT app is pretty much the complete opposite. The app is crammed full of color controls and presets. And this app is one of the cheapest out there at about $5. Bear in mind though that there are two apps, one for iPad and one for iPhone. The blue one is for iPad and the purple one is for iPhone. So each app is a separate purchase. However, it is actually possible to use the iPhone app on your iPad. At least I can use it on my 2020 iPad anyway. There is a bit of a different layout and as the developer is, as far as I know, one person, the apps are not always in sync in terms of features. Anyway, let's talk about the app. First up, the preset looks and emulations. Now, this app contains literally thousands of presets. I'm told by the developer there are more than 3000 presets here. Just swipe through and choose one. To adjust the intensity, tap the preset a second time to open up a slider. There's also a button here which allows you to retain the original luminosity, which means you're only changing the colors and not the contrast. The iPad version now contains film emulation looks. You can also import and export LUTs. This means you can import a video or a frame grabbed from a clip in LumaFusion, grade the file, export the grade as a LUT, then import that LUT into LumaFusion and apply it to clips there. It is quite a long-winded process, but until LumaFusion develops more powerful grading tools, it might be a good second best option. If we open up the adjust menu, we get a long list of tools. We have basic stuff like exposure, highlights, shadows. There's a handy auto white balance tool for fast color correction and white balance adjustments. There's level controls as well as a sharpness slider, which allows you to remove sharpness if you want a softer film-like look. The vignette controls also go a bit deeper than the other apps. There's a simple version and a more complex version with more controls. We have the glow heading, which gives us three really useful settings for getting a film look. Glow, fade and bleach. Glow gives you that misty look you get from things like diffusion filters and older cinema lenses. Fade gives you that faded film look and bleach allows you to apply what's known as a bleach bypass look. This effect also known as skip bleach or silver retention, is a chemical effect which entails either the partial or complete skipping of the bleaching function during the processing of a color film. 
This results in reduced saturation, along with increased contrast and graininess. And you can see it used on several shows and movies, most notably on Steven Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan. So the next setting is one I actually requested from the developer, Film Halation. This is a look of film stock, even modern film stock, which adds a kind of a red-orange halo around high contrast areas of the image, most notably around lights. If you toggle on mask, it shows you exactly where the effect is being applied. You can even adjust the color of the glow. And there's even more to dive into here, including various curve controls as well as color wheels. Under the noise heading, we have denoiser, as well as being able to add film grain. There's also two scopes, a histogram and vector scope option, which is really useful for serious color grading. And you know, there's really too many tools here for me to go into in this video. The only downsides of this app are that maybe there's actually too much choice. Having over 3000 presets to scroll through can be a bit overwhelming. So just be aware that the iPhone and iPad version might not match exactly 100% in the features that they offer. So this is really just down to the developer having time to update both versions. But eventually, it usually does get brought up to date. Okay, let's move on to Moments color grading app, which is called Grain. Grain is an app by Moment, and a company that's pretty well known to smartphone filmmakers. When the app was first released, there was a lot of negative feedback. This was down to some glitches and performance issues. Actually, the biggest complaint was the cost of the app. I thought they might reduce the price in light of that, but I guess they're sticking to their guns and hoping improving the app will bring in paying users at some point. There's a yearly and monthly subscription option, or you can buy the app outright for £50 in the UK, or about $70 in the US. But that really does place Grain as the most expensive of the four apps I've looked at in this video. Again, if you want to try this app without signing up or paying, when you get the subscribe window, just close it by tapping the X. You'll have access to some of the basic features and presets, enough to get a feel for the app, I think. The app does feel really slick, and it has this animated interface, although I've noticed some glitches with the interface not appearing until you tap a button, so I'm guessing the animation actually causes this. Overall, the app is pretty similar to Darkroom. Nicely laid out, but not too many controls. This is going to appeal to people who just want simplicity, and a user interface that's easy on the eye. You can either select a template or create a new look. If you choose a template, you can use it as it is or edit it. Click the settings button to open up editing options. Now we have three headings, color, effects, and overlays. Under color, we have most of the basic grading tools and we have RGB curves and color wheels as well. Selecting effects brings us vignette controls plus bloom and glow controls. They aren't separate from each other, so to get glow, you need to have bloom. These are pretty good, but I couldn't create a film halation effect using them. There's also a bunch of other effects here in another menu. We have film grain and film dust presets, which can be edited. Grain works well and even has a speed control for how fast the grain moves around the frame. Dust allows you to make your clip look like old film with scratches and dust. You can change the shape of the dust, the speed, intensity, density, and switch the color of the dust between black or white. There's no vertical scratch option though, which is maybe a little bit of an oversight. By the way, to remove an effect, just swipe left on it. Light gives us various film burn effects, light leaks and light blooms. Again, this is all editable. Then we have distortions and chroma which allows us to add the chromatic aberrations that you get from old cinema lenses. Finally, VHS gives a kind of ruined old videotape look. And that's pretty much it. Overall, I do actually like this app. It's fun and it's quick to use. That said, considering the price, it's not the most powerful tool out there. And without a film halation effect or, or authentic film stock looks that match known film stocks, it can't really be said to be a complete tool for emulating the film look. Maybe they could spend less effort on animating the user interface or more on making an app that is good value. But it is a genuine competitor for Darkroom. So I think that my favorite app out of all the four that I've tried here 
is going to be the video LUT app. Just the sheer amount of control you get for the cost of the app is really fantastic. And it's kind of funny that the two apps that give you the most control are actually the cheapest out of all the four. They don't look as pretty, but they do have the potential to make your videos look prettier, which is really the most important thing, isn't it? So I just think that video LUT goes the extra step. There's so many options, as well as film halation and genuine film stock emulations as well as well as a whole list of different settings and tools so that you can really get to work on your videos and get some professional results so if you want to learn more about smartphone filmmaking you can join us on patreon where i've got loads of extra guides there's my 170 page book which is a complete sort of overview of smartphone filmmaking i've just recently put my 30 page exploring the film look guide in i'm working on a color grading guide which will be in there soon and as a special deal that we've got with the developer of the video LUT app i'm offering to my members on patreon a code that gives you both those apps for iphone and ipad free so join us on patreon and just message me ask me for a code and you get those both of those apps which are worth about five dollars each for free so that's it for this video if you found it useful please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys in the next video ciao